30 years ago, strange metal airships appeared in our skies. Stay close, remember your training, and we'll make it out! Soon a rain of fire will fall on these lands. I want you to remember, this is all your fault. I've played through Edge of Eternity because you have no time to gain. If you haven't been living under a rock, you've probably heard of the website business called Kickstarter. And Edge of Eternity is a product of a said Kickstarter campaign. But is it a Kickstarter success story? Let's find out. And for those of you doing a Patrick and living under a rock, Kickstarter is a website that allows individuals and companies to put an idea on it, and then the general public can crowdfund it. Basically, lots of people give money to the company or person to help their idea become a reality. Um, there are a couple of things of note. Firstly, the Kickstarter has a goal and it has to hit that goal before anyone's money is taken. So say I put something up and I put 50,000. If during the campaign it didn't hit the 50,000, I wouldn't get any of the money. It has to be above or beyond. And even if the campaign is a success, it's no guarantee that the product or whatever it is you're backing will ever be made or finished. So you may be asking, will I get a refund if it's not made or is rubbish? Oh no, God! You're paying for an idea to become a reality, not a product. Kickstarter itself isn't a shop. Um, and as such, you're not buying a product. You're basically giving someone money to create something. Now, in most cases, you'll get the product back in exchange for the money you put in it. But you're just throwing the money at the company in hopes that they aren't A, scummy, B, go bankrupt, and C, actually able to live up to what they are selling. In this case, it was the French company called Midcar Studios, a small indie French dev team, and they wanted to make a JRPG styled game with a unique gameplay system and a compelling story. Uh, Midcar started the campaign in 2013. They were successful, obviously. They asked for 44,000, and they actually made 161,000, with over 4,000 people backing. And even better, they've released their product and were able to review it. Um, they've released it on everything from Mac, Windows, PS4, 5, Xbox One, Series X, S, and even Switch recently via Cloud Gaming. And it saw its first full release in June 8th, 2021. But did what they release actually meet expectations? I hear you gesticulate. Well, what they created, while I don't believe it hit everything they wanted to, has produced an interesting experience. So let's look at the story first. We find ourselves on the world of Herion, a highly religious world that in past times was visited by an extraterrestrial race called the Archelites. That helped them develop from a medieval-esque society to a bit more modern, with some various bits of tech and such. So it's a bit of a strange cross between medieval and fantasy world, with a lot of elements of both lying around. But recently, the friendship with the Archelites has fallen apart and war is being raised between the natives of Herion versus the space-faring robot army of the Archelites. The war is being led by the ruling religious force known as the Consort, who have built, have built an army using a conscription method. Oh, and on top of that, there is something called the Corrosion. A strange disease that mutates everything it affects into horrifying beasts and zombies with cybernetic little bits and all sorts. Pretty grim. And the corrosion by the general populace is believed to be another Archelite weapon. Now, we find ourselves in the shoes of Darian, one such conscripted soldier, an all round quite depressing fellow, who, after the events in the tutorial section, deserts from the army. Desertion being a death penalty, by the way. Why does he desert? Well, his sister has sent him a letter that their mother has the corrosion. So off you go to visit Darian's family. This is where we meet his sister, Selene. His sister, a priestess of the consort, uh, informs Darian that she's been tasked by said consort with curing the corrosion. And well, with their mother having it, they kind of have some good motivation. Now, Selene is an interesting character. 
I wouldn't say she is the most likable person. She can. Same could be said about Double D, the pressing Darian. As she is quite headstrong and in some ways very arrogant. Well, this pair in tow, we head off to find Selene's master and cure the corrosion. But will we? And that's pretty much the entire plot, with, you know, going into massive spoilers about all the twists and turns. So, what would a JRPG inspired game be without a battle system? In that, this game is a little different from your basic turn based affair and sits somewhere in between Final Fantasy VII's ATB and like Arctic Ogre's grid based system, well, hexes in this case, uh, strategy style. Albeit the strategy is on a lot smaller um, scale than Tactics Ogre, since you only have like four party members. When you encounter the enemy on the field, it's not random encounters, uh, whether that be walking into them or from like zipping forward with your sword and giving them a brief stun. You're taken into the hex base sealed off area. Um, it do load into a battle screen, as in like a lot of games, but the battle screen is actually the exact spot you were in, which is pretty nice to see. So any environment around you, like buildings or bits of trees and plants, are all there. It's just now sealed off, gridded. Um, so it's not kind of like some other mythical realm that you go into in a lot of other JRPGs. The balance system itself is quite simple. Everyone has a turn speed bar, a la the ATB system popularised in Final Fantasies. Uh, so the higher deep speed stat, the faster it fills, and the more times you get to go. Um, some skills also have a wind up time before they go off, and especially spells. So you get up, the ATB bar fills, click the spell, it then has to fill again but in red. And you can be interrupted in this time if you're hit with kind of like basic style attacks or some abilities. And it's the same for enemies. They, they have the bars that fill up. So when it's your party turn, you have the choice of moving around the grids, using skills, items, or basic attack. You can advance time if you have to wait for something to happen. Uh, skip your turn if you need someone else to go first, or you can flee. So pretty much all your standards. And it's all based around like a button context sensitive menu as opposed to like a, a menu system like where you just go up and down a menu and select things. It's all based on what buttons you press on the controls. So it's kind of limited how many options you have. The idea behind the combat is to move around the grid to try and get yourself into an advantageous position, uh, such as back attack or avoiding hexes that have been selected for targeting spells. So you, you kind of have abilities that either attack a, a specific target, and if that target moves, you crack it, or attack specific hexes and they get lit up. Um, the other thing you might move into is various environmental items such as crystals grown out of the ground that give you either buffs or debuffs. Uh, enemies also have elemental weaknesses and strengths, so you'll be using those to try and figure out what's the best thing to use against them to kill them quicker. You also get a special attack after certain story beats uh, that fills up slowly as you go through a battle and then you can unleash it for, unleash it for massive damage. The world itself is a series of interconnecting areas as opposed to like the old school world map. Dotted around them is the save points, usually accompanied by a rest spot that restores your energy. Something that had never really affected my gameplay. I'm sure it did something, but it, it didn't seem to do much to me. The save points are also teleporters. You can go to other previously visited save spots. The town areas are pretty simple, so it's a typical array of shops, NPCs, hunt board that gives you some quests. Some of the NPCs have little question marks to get quests from. Uh, there's a bit of some interesting shop variety. So you've got your standard weapon, armor, items. Uh, one that sells like crafting recipes that you can use. And then you have the various spots for crafting. And the item shop doesn't just sell consumable items, it sells crafting materials. And there's usually two different types. Um, the armor shop tends to sell the same armor that you get from the crafting recipes in the area. So it depends which one you want to do for better effect. So you might, if you have lots of money, you might buy the armor. If you have lots of materials, you might just build the armor. There's also a crystal shop, which sells the crystals for your weapons, which I'll talk about in a minute. And a crystal merging table that could be used to combine said crystals, crystals to make them more effective. Onto the crystal system. So outside of leveling up, which buffs your stats, you also have the crystals, which you can equip onto weapons. Now each weapon, levels up as you battle, same way your characters level up. 
and as they level up they unlock more slots to fit the crystals into so kind of th think of it kind of like the materia system etc except you can constantly change it how you want um, each slot you put a crystal into provides a passive buff so something like five three percent physical damage up and a different it has multiple branching routes on each weapon so you can kind of choose the buffs you want for each character so like darian you might go down an attack route where most of the buffs are physical damage now the crystals themselves also provide a stat buff and each crystal kind of has varying different stat buffs so you might have two blue crystals one giving you plus magic and one gives you plus attack so you kind of got to decide which crystal is best for which person uh, the crystals also come in different colors and this relates to different abilities they have but not all of the crystals of that color have all the abilities so it's kind of you've got to choose the right crystal for the right person with the right abilities you want it makes for a lot of um, messing around and changing them and, um, and it's quite flexible so you can build the character exactly how you want it if you want say Celine to be a magic powerhouse and you go down a magic route giving her elemental magic abilities uh, with crystals that buff magic and then with the crystal merging table you can kind of work to get the crystal you want the crystals you need now presentation wise how does this hold up well for the most part it's pretty good it isn't your average 2d snes inspired indie rpg that we've seen hundreds of probably made an rpg maker no it's a full 3d game which is quite rare for the indie scene especially around rpgs especially jrpg inspired ones now i don't usually go for the whole it looks like x generation of games because you know most chuckle fucks say everything looks like a ps1 or ps2 game when it just doesn't but it can be useful so i have i like to say this game has a very late ps3 early ps4 visual quality around its character models but the world itself is actually very modern very beautiful like it actually gives you this feel of an alien planet the plant life doesn't look like it's from earth it looks like it's from another world and i really like that you also get your classic mix of environments so you can see an ice area a fire area because it wouldn't be an rpg without those sound wise though the sound effects i'm not going to deny are a little flat like an example is one character uses a gun and well it sounds more like she's firing a potato gun than a revolver but the music on the other hand is pretty fantastic i'm not a music person so i don't really have the describing skills for it but it's got that epic classical quality here in a lot of rpgs but done well and with like this mellow sort of pieces to go well with it as well it's just it's just good good osd so that has described the game but what is actually good about it well i'd say the battle system is pretty much a, a double-edged sword it is good and enjoyable and has some variety of tactical shenanigans and you know what it was fun to play because of the battle system being so different and unique um, the characters themselves aren't your usual save the world goody two-shoes type like like we saw in, if you spread um, listen to my review of as divine hearts they're not that they the characters are all flawed people like I said, Deline is a bit egotistical, Dario is depressed, and the others have their own problems. I especially like the third full-time character you get. He is honestly one of the greatest characters <laughs> I've seen in a long time. And honestly, for this being made by such a small indie studio, I'm very impressed overall. Um, they definitely have the ambition there, and they definitely tried to realise it. The story, I will grab, starts a bit slow, but by the end I was truly invested in the story of Dario and Deline and the world of Herion. Is there any bad about the game? Well, the game is janky as fuck. From animation movements being a little stiff, interesting loading times in random places, to disappearing assets, the game was possibly a bit more ambitious than the team could realise with only the three grey testers. But, on a more positive note, I only experienced one complete crash, and, well, I basically lost zero progress because it was loading between an area and it auto-saved just before loading. So, yeah, didn't suck too much. Uh, 
the battle system as well, I said was a bit of a double-edged sword. And while I think it's quite good, it does need another couple more rounds in the mixer to refine it. It feels like a really good proof of concept as opposed to a finished product. That makes sense. Same. No. And the same goes for the crystal system as well. That could do a little bit more refining to make it perfect. Um, what I did find frustrating was the game using button based menus as opposed to just lists. I don't know what it is with modern games and using these like button context systems. What's wrong with just having a list? It's easy to navigate. And these, I find myself pressing all sorts of buttons trying to get the right thing and then occasionally use the wrong attacks because of it. And this was even 40 hours in, I was still doing the same. Um, Another thing that I think holds it back, I feel, is the world areas are a little too large for what is needed. It's designed around using this like cat-like creature called the Nekaru. But even that, even when you're on that, it's not great. There's little things you can do to make you go faster, but there's not enough of them. And and yeah, they take away the Nekaru quite often, so you find yourself shanks and ponying around a lot. Um, if the areas were a little smaller, say, more ff10 size then it would have produced this laser focused experience that i think would have made it a lot better but now before giving my final thoughts as we always do we'll have a look at what the critics have to say so looking at it it seems overall it's quite a mixed response in general so averaging about seven six out of ten if we would give it a score um so first up though is GameSpace, who, contrary to saying it was a 6-7, they gave it a 9 out of 10, with saying the overall feel of the game is great and I would recommend it to any fan of RPG genre. Well, they seemed fully taken in by the game world and the story, but they did give the uh, negative to the combat system. Hardcore Game, on the other hand, gave it an impressive attempt, while giving it a 3.5 out of 5, which I think is a good sum up for this small team at Midgar Studios. Noisy Pixel seemed to hold a similar impression. Beautiful game held back by the ambition of the developers. But their other statement, saying it is a broken narrative, I believe to be kind of incorrect. It's obviously set up for a second instalment and as the narrative was pretty concise and focused, if not all the questions had been answered yet. It's kind of one of those where the story actually was very simple story beats throughout but not all of it has been finished yet so i get the feeling midgar are probably working on a second game but the whole ambition of the developers seems to be a common theme throughout a lot of the like the reviews by people from the critics and stuff um it seems to have, everyone seems to have felt that the game maybe was a bit too much for the development team's first first outing but yeah what do i think well i think like i said when I'm talking about the battle system it's a great proof of concept overall it needs a lot more refining and maybe that's another game in the same world or maybe it's another game but using the same systems and if they do that spend the time and refine the system it could be a modern classic it's so close. They did so well for such a small team, but it wasn't quite there. i not saying I didn't enjoy the game, I really did. I, I really liked the flawed characters, um, but I wanna say, fuck the final boss, man. Jesus Christ. It's the only bloody time in the whole game where I had to go back and grind properly. And that was just to face this asshole. But yeah. But yes, if you're looking for something along the lines, say, like Star Ocean or the Xeno title, this little French JRPG-inspired game may well be what you're looking for, and it can see you entertained for roughly 40 hours. So, my rating is... Give it a go!